So first I will talk to you about the possibilities of AI in process industry. This is an overview of process industry. Uh, I work as a research manager at VTT and I also work as a digitalization leader in Aspire, which is an industry organization representing process industry at the European level. So when we, uh, I will start about I'm telling you something about the Aspire the organization. This represents 10 process industry sectors in the European level. We have had around 180 participants, yeah, industry, SMEs, research organizations, universities, and other stakeholders. And we have joined the forces with the European Commission under the co-program co partnership called Processes for Planet, and where we are aiming to gather 1.3 million billion euros for process industry related projects from the Horizon Europe program. Mostly we are focusing on cluster four, digital industry and space, and also we have some connections for, for the cluster five because the energy is mostly in the cluster five. So this is a kind of joint effort where, we, where the process industry has joined forces with the European Commission. We try to represent the process industry approach for the wider so European Commission, represent what is the important questions for the process industry, what, what other things we need, should really research and develop further in order to make, make the, the green transition true in practical level. And if you think about the process industry objectives and challenges, of course, the objective is to be climate neutral, circular and competitive, competitive in European level, and also to bring prosperous, society, prosperous to society. But uh, as you all know, we face the huge challenges in process industry. Uh, process industry produces huge amount of greenhouse gas emissions um, and also produces waste materials and also generate waste. So these are the uh, major challenges for process industry. We have to ma manage this by uh, 2050, according to the research agenda for pro processes for planet. And on uh, left hand, Side so you can see you can see the domain areas that that covers covers uh, the, this process industry sectors, and for for Finnish, for example, we can pick up steel, uh, chemistry, and pulp and paper minerals. These are very important for Finnish scale. And just to mention that pulp and paper joined a couple of years ago for 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 Spire. So this is a kind of overview of a kind of challenges we are we are facing, and if we look at the challenges more focused about the uh, uh, about the first challenge, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, according to this plan, the uh, or, or this diagram, the steel and chemical industry is responsibly responsible for the major CO two emissions at, at the European level. And this is something we have to, uh, have to find a solution and in really fast time scale. And I was thinking about that, maybe we can also think about these huge challenges when we, when, we, when we talk about artificial intelligence, how artificial intelligence can, can really face these challenges, how, uh, how, how it can help, help process industry to solve these challenges. Of course, concerning these challenges, we, we need to think about that. Of course, we need some uh, technological breakthroughs, breakthroughs also in that, but artificial intelligence can have really supporting role to make this and to design these breakthrough, breakthrough technologies. And also about the second challenge is, is that we, we produce a lot of waste materials. Uh, the feedstock materials in process industry are biomass, metal ores, non-metallic material, and also fossil energy materials and carriers. So most of them are 
producing the emission to air, emission to water, or waste for a landfill. But the one thing is that is increasing that we have to increase the recycling of these materials. So we have to figure out the ways how do we recycle these feedstock materials when they end up to waste. And also in this in this uh, diagram, I see a lot of potential for artificial intelligence to plan how how these um, feedstock flows will go will go and how can we plan them well beforehand, well beforehand, how, how can we optimize the whole feedstock flow of the whole process industry. And the last uh, challenge is, is about how to, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the producing the waste, waste generation. It's also huge because we are producing a, Tons, tons, tons of uh, uh, end materials. We also use a huge amount of wastes. We have to really think about also this one. How can we decrease decrease this uh, production of waste? But there's a lot of uh, uh, this requires maybe more more other breakthrough breakthrough technologies than artificial intelligence. But of course, artificial intelligence can be used in optima optimizing all also these and maybe avoiding the use of waste. But in overall, it seems like we are in a problematic area. We produce a lot of a lot of harmful and end, end, end materials, but we also produce uh, very important materials that we use in everyday life. We, we see steel, plastics, paper, or, or, or cement, or all, all materials that ma process industry is manufacturing in our everyday life. It, it, it is a kind of embedded in, in our life. And if you think about the, the, in terms of employment and in terms of production in Europe, and Europe around 20% of that is concerning the process industry. And on the right hand side, you can see the uh, impact of uh, manuf uh, manufacturing industry at, at Finland's level. Uh, this includes all, also the manufacturing of machines and equipment and also the process industry. And so around 50% of Finland's export is covered by manufacturing industry and also 30% of Finnish labor workforce is working for, for manufacturing industry. So these are the, uh, these are the numbers really significant domain area. And I think really, we really need to find, find solutions for the challenges I showed you beforehand. And what does the AI in factories plans and processes, what does it really, really mean? What is, it, what is it in practice? In practice, we are going towards autonomous process industry. The autonomy, automation level is increasing all the time. And of course, there's a huge role of artificial intelligence. And if we, if we divide, divide a kind of production in three levels, first is how do we digitalize the process and product research and development? How do we design the materials? How do we, how can we use AI for material design? Because in the, in the future, we, we use a lot of different materials. For example, we use more pipe-based materials. How can we really simulate, predict the impact for the for the end 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 material? How can we really really evaluate beforehand how they will behave in in real production? And if we go for the digitalization of plan, we need to really think about the whole, whole plant as a as a digital plant. How do, how do they operate? And uh, we also need to think about the, how do we develop intelligent materials that go through the plants and how do we monitor, monitor the equipment of the whole industry site as a whole. So we, we are talking about autonomous plant uh, that all, all, the, all the plant site is uh, true process digitalized and it is, it is uh, optimized as a whole, starting from raw material, uh, raw material to the end, end product. 
And I think very important role here is that AI can be, can be used in process optimization. How do we run the processes in really optimized way? How, do, how can we use really uh, just a minimal amount of energy and raw material and or still achieve the best quality? quality. And then the third, third part is that how do we digitalize the, con the connected processes and supply chains? How, do we, how can we really manage the raw material uh, through, throughput throughout the whole plant? How, how can we really manage and optimize the supply chain of the materials throughout the value chain? And also we have to think about how do we uh, collaborate with you know kind of some symbiosis between the industry and urban areas because uh, they are in close collaboration in the future and here i was thinking about the ai can really really uh, have a significant significant role when we think about the whole supply chain uh, like I said before, the materials will change, the raw materials will change, the end, end materials will change. Uh, the places where we acquire the raw materials will change. So we have a kind of optimize, optimize the quality and also the cost, costs for the raw materials and also the routes and uh, for the whole supply, supply chain for, for, the, for the industrial processes. And uh, I think this is a key question, how, how can we make true process optimization and how we really can use the AI in help for this? Because at the moment there is a lot of, lot of information, a lot of disparate, dis disparate information sources, a sources, lot of stakeholders and a lot of complexity, complexity, uh, complexity. So we, how can we really use AI for, for covering this complexity of, of the supply chain management throughout the process, starting from raw material and ending to the customer and recycling, and then the loop will start again. So this is kind of a question we have to really think about. But this is, this is not, not the only, only only thing we have to think about. We also have to think about the organization maturity. We have to start developing the organization uh, so they can use the, use the new technologies. We have to update the tools and technologies that the organization companies are using. And maybe the most important part I want to emphasize is the skills. We need to train the existing and future workforce for, for this because everything is going to change. When we think about the future, we will collaborate with, uh, with, uh, with the machines and people's work will change in overall. So this need, needs a long-term development and training training for the, for the future workforce. And also very important part is safety. We have to think about the safety in two points. In, in other ways, the AI may, may raise up some safety concerns because we need, we need to trust AI and we need a kind of also explainable decisions, but also we can use AI for improving their safety. We need to kind of uh, develop design practices. We need to risks control. We need enforcement and future proofing. How, how can we do this, this in the future? And also a very important part is cybersecurity. And also, if you, think, if you think about the industry, we need to cross-sectorial collaboration, learning from other, 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 other domain areas, for example, ICT, and like in here, from the, from the academy side, from the, for example, from AI. So these are also the things, things we need to consider. This is not only technological, technological question. And this was about overall things, and I, I would like to show you one, one case study we have conducted in steel industry. This is a kind of practical case study. We wanted to improve the quality of uh, steel industry products. Here we were focused on slabs, 
and then then we focused on the how to develop a quality gate for slabs kind of how do we predict the quality of slabs before they before they go to hot rolling mills so therefore we we developed an explainable steel quality prediction system and this is based on gradient boost synthesis and trees and we had uh, around a year ago we had a testing testing period at the SSAP factory Rahe, and there we where we there we achieved that by checking around 10 percentage of the slabs it is possible to find out about 50 percentage of the falls so this is very uh, significant result and now we're thinking about if if what is the possibility to bring this in, into practice in implementation level we used data acquisition from multiple process bases we used plate surface defects from hot rolling and we focused on certain slab grades and scarfing class classes and as a technology technology we used gradient boosting trees and also sharp tree explainer laboratory so this is a kind of uh, uh, practical case study we made we made a lot of a lot of more these case studies and you can read it from the from the publication on the right hand side uh, um, right I think when we think about the AI in process industry we, we are still, for me it is still a, a huge possibility it hasn't really come true yet so uh, according to one study conducted last year in spire environment only low pro there's a low adoption of AI in process industry. It's below 30 percentage. And the most promising technologies the companies see is machine learning, smart robotics, and natural language processing. And this is a kind of, I think we, we, are, we are better than this. We can really adopt, adopt AI better for our industry. And I think uh, there's three ways we have to do it. We need collaboration with academic industry. We need to kind of, Build the bridge again uh, over the over this gap that is existing, and we need to bring AI research work into practical industrial solutions, and we also need to AI reference cases with proven measured benefits because we are we are still lacking these. So with these with these actions, I think we can we can we can really make this true. It's it's not only the possibility; it, it will be true. And this was shortly from my side, a kind of conduction for the team and I will give floor to Simo.